idea. Not me. Water rats in the stomach. Hey, Eddie, where'd you learn to sing? Oh, oh I don't know. Just picked it up somewhere, I guess. <laughs> hey, Eddie. That goes... Uh-uh. Like Sophie. <laughs> Hey, Eddie, there goes a calf down in the, in, the, in the ditch. And little calves can't get out of the ditch by itself. Little calves make only good eating for mountain lions. I'll get him. You boys stay with the herd, Eddie. All right. in the deal for the ace play. No, it isn't that. It's just his mother instinct. Instinct is right. For the accent on the last syllable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, fellas. we got to get that herd moving if we expect to close the deal on him at the Barrio Ranch. with his hat off as Hank Lawrence. The other one's his foreman, Bud Ford. That's the one we want. We're out of luck today, boys. We won't have to go all the way to buy our ways to get our men. Get on in to El Paso and find us a place to bed down before dark. I'll stay here and close the deal on our stock and meet you at the Spanish kitchen. Oh, boy. I am not in the Spanish cooking in a long time. Say, Waco, 
You may know your gals, but I sure know my Spanish to the dead dishes. Oh, I know some pretty good Spanish dishes myself. Now, let's see. There was uh, Maria, Rosa, um, and... Um, hubba, hubba, hubba. Wagon again, huh? Why not? Come on, fellas, break it up. Good going. Come on. That's good enough for me. I have my bill of sale right here. But first, I'd like to take a look at the stock, if you don't mind. Certainly not. Mom and Dad passed away. Why, I decided I'd better stay here and help Hank run the ranch. You, uh, were studying home care, I suppose? No, high finance. Oh, uh, here's your bill of sale for the cattle. I hope I didn't make any mistakes on the figures. No, you didn't. Well, here's your check. Thanks. Oh, Miss Lawrence. Tell me, uh, has Hank been able to figure out why the cattle thieves have selected only his ranch to raid? No. It's still just as much of a mystery as ever. Since he's hired Bert Ford as foreman, why, whoever it is has been taking pot shots at him. Sounds kind of bad. I'll say. We've given Mr. Ford a free hand in running everything, and he was doing so well up until lately. But... It's getting so dangerous now, he dare not be on the range alone. I'd like to have a talk with him. Could you tell me where I can find him? Well, he and my brother went down on the lower range this afternoon. But uh, I think they might be going into town tonight. Perhaps you could find them at the Spanish kitchen. Thanks. Well, I hope nothing happens to Bruce. I mean, Mr. Ford. I uh, see what you mean.
What's the matter, Eddie? You look sick. I was sick for a second. What's the matter with me? Am I seeing double? Look. Hey, am I feeding the wrong face? I never saw two faces look so much alike in my life. There's Eddie Dean over there. I guess he just got through delivering that new batch of cattle. Hi, Eddie. Why, Hank Lawrence. Come on. Hello, you old horse thief. Hello, Eddie. I got something I want to talk to you about. Sure thing. This is Bert Ford, my foreman. Hello, Bert. Glad to meet you. This is Sylvia Jones, Waco Harper. Hello. I can't get over how much we look alike. Yeah, neither can I. Well, they say everybody's got a perfect double. I guess this is one time they just happen to meet up. What's on your mind, Eddie? I uh, heard of the trouble you've been having. Seeing these two together gave me a great idea. Let's have it. With Waco just arriving in town, no one else but us realizes their close resemblance. That's right. I'm beginning to see the light. Well, I have Waco poses my foreman, Bert. Wait a minute. Don't I have anything to say about this? Let me see if I'm getting this straight. Now, you want me to take his place as foreman of your ranch and be him? You catch on pretty fast. I can understand why. He's the one somebody's trying to kill. Oh, I knew there was a reason in it. Nothing doing. I'm sure glad I don't look like him. Come on, Waco. As a special favor for me. Mm -mm. Not as a special favor for my own mother. You still want to learn the cattle business, don't you? Mm, not now. Then you'd better get riding. I'm going to stick around town here, and I don't want this case complicated. You'll be well rewarded. I'll ask for me at your disposal. You'll live like a king as long as the job lasts. All right, fellas. I'll do it. But mind you, there ain't the money that's in it. Fine. Tell me you missed again. I'm sorry, boss, but that court seems to have a charm life. You certainly do like things. You're supposed to be good with your guns. But for all the help you've given me, I'd be just as well off if you were back in the pen. With Ford around, I don't dare touch another head of cattle on the Barrow Ranch. Well, there's many head in that last bunch we got you. Yes, I know. But he's got a new herd moving in already to replace him. We've got to work fast. If Lawrence loses his contract, the stock that I've got on hand, we stand next in line for it. But our hands are tied unless we get rid of Ford. Well, if he stands here without those, I know I could get him. But he always hides him. Yes, I know. He's yellow, all right. Or else he'd blab all he knows about it. That's why we've got to stop him before he does. Come in. Hey, boss. One of the boys just seen Bert Ford eating over the Spanish kitchen. So, he finally ventured into town, huh? Well, Knuckles, here's a chance to prove your reputation with guns. I won't miss this time, Ringo. Come on, buddy. I feel pretty good luck with these high some clothes. Mr. Ford sure got mighty fine taste, huh? <laughs> you should have seen him dressed up in your clothes. He sure looked classy. Ford went out the back way. He's going to stay hit out in my Thompson's place. Remember, you're Bert Ford, understand? Yeah, but the, the only thing is, his boots are a little stuck on me. I, I kind of hurt. Well, well, 
himself. Look what just flew into town. Old Pops and Pans himself. <laughs> Well, howdy, mister. Hello, Pops and Pans. Well, howdy there, Matt. Hey, stop right up. I got everything from imported shaving mixed of firecrackers. Yes, sir. Got grabs, got bases. <laughs> 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 You'll just have your fun there, fellas. That'll cost you, that's all. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Just put it on our bill. Let's see how you look in this, Bugsy. That ought to just fit you, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see you. <laughs> Gentlemen, please. That was my very best wig. That's going to make some bald head awful happy. But it makes me very happy to see it on Bugsy. Bugsy, you don't know how good you look in that. <laughs> hey. What? Wait, that's it. That's my most expensive wig. That's my most expensive wig. What's this thing? Well, that's rare, rare china. Very rare oh, china. Yeah. The best I could find. Oh, no, ain't that too bad. That's something you're going to have to pay for. How much do they owe you, mister, including that? Uh, that's $40 for the wig, $15 for the china piece. Uh, that's $55 in all. Oh, and, uh... 25 cents for the balloon. They brought that, too. Hey, uh, I don't know who you are, mister, but you're asking for trouble. Destroying something that doesn't belong to him. Come on, let's get out of the ranch. Yeah, hey, I wonder who that fella is. He's plenty tough. Yeah. If Ringo thinks Bud Ford is yellow, he must be colorblind. Hey, you fellas. If you want your guards, you'll have to fish for them. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You didn't give me my 25 cents. Oh, shut up. You've been all over the property now, and all you have to know in case anybody asks you is that you were born in Dallas and have been ranching most of your life. But in the last five years, you've put at least five lashes back on their feet. You've got to feel important and look important. Now why don't you ask him something he can do? There's only one thing we've got to worry about. Don't get too close to Miss Lawrence. She's Hank's sister. And she's the only one that might get suspicious. Oh, women. <laughs> oh, uh, I can handle any of them. Don't worry about that. Yeah, that's what bothers me. And remember, your name is Bert and not Waco. Well, you better look this place over and try and get familiar with things. You'll sleep in the back bedroom of the main ranch house. Come on, Eddie, Sophie, I'll show you the bunkhouse where you'll sleep. Hey, 
hurt. <laughs> you old darling. Where have you been? I've been so worried about you. Oh, well, I, I guess I was in town. Well, don't you know? Why, why, yes, yes, I was in town. What have I got to do to get you to kiss me? Hit you over the head? After all, we're practically engaged, aren't we? All right, why, sure. I'm sure we are. But don't you think I'd better put my boots on first? Why, Bert Ford, you weren't trying to sneak in here, were you? Oh, no, no, it isn't that. I, but I just don't feel right in kissing a girl without my boots on. Have you been drinking? Oh, oh no. No, I, I just don't feel well. I know just the thing that'll take care of that. Yeah? What? I'm going to fix you a nice big dose of castor oil. <laughs> So you're the man that really knows his women. <laughs> oh, shut up, will you? Where's the bunkhouse? I'm staying with you fellas. Yeah. Follow me. I'm sleeping over there. And don't ask him why he don't like the ranch house. Well, suit yourself, Bert. By the way, now that you've been staying here, Ace and his gang are planning a little get-together for you tonight. Fine, we'll be there. Nice for me. I haven't been with the bus hits in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Thank you. Did you like some cookies, Jerry? Uh, yes, I Oh, boy. I tell you, Texas is not the biggest state. Listen, when Texas was admitted to the Union, they made the Rio Grande the borderline, didn't they? That's right. Well, it takes 15 days to get from uh, across from Texas to the Rio Grande, doesn't it? Yep. And it takes 15 days to get to Texas, don't it? Yep. Well, that makes the state of Texas just one half as big as the whole United States. Now, wait a minute, Sophie. I agree with you. Texas is a big state. Yeah. But it's not quite that big. Oh. You see, I looked it up once. Yeah? Yeah, I wrote a song about it. Sure enough? Mm-hmm. How does it go? Put on those cups, boys, and let's tell it. There are 1,501 miles of heaven up and down and across Texas land. Just north of the Rio Grande, where you always get a welcome hand. Oklahoma, west of Louisiana, east of beautiful New Mexico. 737, 764. Add these miles together, then you won't need any more. For there's 1,501 miles of heaven up and down in the cross Texas land. Dan, why they're so dead set on getting rid of that foreman. Well, as I can see, the Cattlemen's Association hires you to track down stolen cattle. And there ain't nobody hiring you to track down killers. Why don't you stick to your first job? 
just the same. I think they both meet up the same road. How do you figure that? Whoever stole that last 200 head from this ranch is the same person or persons who are trying to kill Bert Ford. Why? I don't get it. Probably because he knows something. I'm glad that it's him that knows something instead of me. This is one time that it pays to be dumb. <laughs> I'm going to ride over on the south range, see what I can find out. If I'm going more than an hour, start looking. Meantime, watch over Waco and see that he doesn't say the wrong thing. See that he doesn't say the wrong thing? Who's going to watch me to see that I don't say the wrong thing? You're getting smarter every day, Sophie. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> into one of them we waited long enough. Yeah, that's the young lady that's getting that working over. You know, where he gets paid back. You got him. doing here? Hey, Eddie, what are you doing down there? Well, I'll guarantee you I wasn't down there because I needed a bath. Well, this is a funny place to jump off of. Sometimes a dangerous jump leads a man to safety, Toby. Yeah, especially if he's running away from rattlesnakes. Mm -hmm. What happened? Some fellas took a shot at me. Yeah. Let's get to our horses. Did you get a good look at them? Nope. They were too far away. Yeah. Hey, one of them was wearing silver spurs. He just lost his route. How do you like that? We better report this to Ringo. Oh, oh, yes. 
think nothing of it. Why, that's a favor I'll never forget. If you hadn't showed up, no telling what they would have done. They were plenty tough, too. And just to show my appreciation to you, I got a nice present I want to give you. Oh, please, Mr. Tucker. Uh, some other time. There's no time like the present. Well, what in the world are you doing with all that stuff? Well, I'm a salesman, and this is some of my wares. See, now. Here it is, yes. A nice, solid silver belt buckle. Do you like it? Oh, yes. That's, that's nice looking. It's all yours, too. Oh, no. Well, that, that's too much for me. Nothing's too much for you, ma'am. Not after what you've done for me. Oh, all right, if, if you insist. But I don't feel quite right in taking it. Oh, I see you hand a firecracker, too. Oh, yes, I wouldn't be without my firecracker line. Why, you never can tell when I'm going to run into a celebration or a wedding or an election or even a revolution. This is one commodity I don't have any trouble selling. You take this here big one. It's dynamite. Uh, let me show you. Well, I wish you wouldn't have done that. Well, it didn't go off anyway. Bert, this is Tuhorn. Hank has hired him. This is Bert Ford, our foreman. Howdy. Glad to know you. We can always use a good hand around here. Thanks. You can make yourself at home over in the bunkhouse, Tuhorn. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, I better get busy. I, I've got two more saddles to put into shape. Oh, Bert, you're acting so strange lately. Seems as though you're trying to avoid me. Is there anything wrong? Oh, well, no, there's nothing wrong, Terry. Uh, but but I, I've got a confession to make to you. Why? Well, oh, excuse me, Miss Terry, but I've got to see Sophie about something important. So you're the one that's so brave with women, are you? Why, you're scared stiff. Why, as old and ugly as I am, I could do better myself. You're all talking no gumption. Why, you would have spilt the whole bag of beans if I hadn't caught you. Now look, Sophie, I don't mind being shot at. I don't mind being walked on or bawled out or even being read by you. But when I went into this deal, I didn't take on no deal of lovemaking. And, oh, I, I have to admit to you on the quiet that playing as much with the ladies as I told you I was. Do you know what a wolf is? Uh-huh. Well, you're a sheep. And in sheep's clothing, too. Well, Terry, looks like I'm going to have to let you in on a secret. Is it about birds? Well, yes, it is. <laughs> Don't worry, I know all about it. He isn't Bert, but... Where is Bert Ford? I'm worried about him. I can't tell anyone where he is right now, Terry. Not even you. That's the only way we can keep him safe. Just trust me, Terry. And please, don't let this Bert know that you know he isn't your first person. <laughs> don't worry. That would spoil my fun. This Bert has a way with him. Will you never settle down to just one bow? Oh, I will. When the right one comes along. <laughs>
nice, quiet jail built for people just like you. Ringo, they got two horns. He's in jail. But how did that happen? That stranger who rode into town the other day and picked on Knuckles was taken over the jail. He told the jail, as long as there's no law here, he takes charge until the sacred judge arrives. Oh, he did. I don't suppose he knows that I run this town. I don't think so, boss. Well, if he's going to wait until the judge arrives, he's given me a few ideas. Yeah? Yeah, we'll send for our own judge immediately. Let's see, uh, old Diamond Smith ought to make a pretty good judge. Send one of the boys over for him right away. Explain the setup to him. And just before he's due to arrive, we'll run a few of my cattle into the Bar Elf's corral and let the law take care of the rest. On the sands of the old Rio Grande, where I strolled with my love hand in hand, neath the cottonwood tree, where she whispered to me little words that are still in my. As I sit by the old Rio Grande, I write with your name in the sand, and I pray while on your way you bring her back someday to the sand. The old Rio Grande, dear old river, I know you by a friend. On you and you alone, I depend. Get 
Welcome back to the Fork the Road. Judge Fitz is possibly waiting for us there. Come on, Judge. We'll first show you where they've hidden the cattle so you won't have a chance to get rid of them before you made your arrest. Good. That's me. I'm the new circuit judge, and I'm placing you under arrest. But what for? Stealing cattle. I'm sure glad you arrived, Judge. I, uh... And I'm arresting everybody else on this ranch as his accomplices. What's your proof? I just saw with my own eyes some cattle with Ringo Evans' brand of the Cross E on them in Lawrence's South Corral. That's enough for me. I'm heading for town to get Bert. Maybe he can explain things to the judge. Good. Get that girl and bring her back. This on these men. We'll see that they get a quick trial. I guess you men know the penalty for stealing cattle. Hold on there, Judge. We're not paying a penalty for something we didn't do without a chance to explain. Keep me covered. Till I get out of sight. With pleasure. And I'm going with it. The circuit judge has just arrested Eddie and Hank and the fellow that's posing as you. He says that they stole some of Ringo Evans' cattle. Oh, so Ringo's still up to his dirty work, huh? There's going to be some hangings if you don't tell what you know. But that wouldn't do any good. I don't have any proof. Oh, but don't worry. We'll figure something out. Stop here. Well, where is it? Mr. Evans and that new judge came in this morning and released him. Much obliged. These hombres covered till he got out of sight. We're doing better than that. We're keeping him covered till he gets back. That's a good idea, seeing as how it's either our necks or theirs. It appears the judge has run into a little snag. Yeah. Hey, 
Stop those guns. Your arrival is very timely, Mr. Evans. And there's more charges against you. Resisting arrest and menacing a representative of the government for his very life. Wait a minute, Judge. He don't mean nothing. He's an imposter. Twohorn told me all about it. To cover up for Bert Ford. Bugsy, keep these men covered until we get back. Right, boss. Ford's the man we want, and he's somewhere in town. Judge, you and your men come with me. Hey, take a look at this. Here. Did you ever see a branding iron like this before? That's the funniest looking brand I ever saw. Let's see. Uh... <laughs> Looks like Chinese to me. Yeah. Now, the Bar L is the known brand of the oranges. Yeah. And across these, the known brand of Ringo Evans. Yeah. Well, I wonder what this brand has to do with it. Hey, that's perfect. Yeah. Maybe this will help influence the judge. Let's get over to Bert Ford. He'll be interested in this, too. Go ahead. So what did Ringo Evans ever have on you that you couldn't expose him? Well, I ran into him one night with a band of stolen cattle. And he warned me if I ever told anyone, he'd get even with you and Hank. Steal all your stock and eventually take your government contracts over. So to protect you, I've been trying to get proof. Positive proof. So that when he did speak, well, I had something to back me up. You see, without proof, well, it'll be his word against mine. And you know how powerful he is. Bert, it's Eddie. Let me in. Bert. Here's something interesting I found over in Evans' office. Now, it's evident that he's the one that's responsible for the missing stock. He's stealing the cattle and changing Lawrence's brand over to his own. Well, that's all the evidence we need. Hey, that man's been watching this place. <laughs> of Ringo Evans. Let's be on the cover here till that judge gets back to town. With our evidence, he and his men haven't got a chance. Well, you won't have to wait long. There's sure plenty of them. Well, I don't see the judge. It isn't Judge Crawford, it's a new one. He's the one over there with Evans. Why, he isn't any more of a judge than I am. You're being kidded. That's Diamond Smith. His reputation goes all the way back to Chicago. All right, Ford. We're giving you and the others just three minutes to come out with your hands up. Give you a little while to show your hand, Evans. But it'll only be a matter of hours till I'll have you behind bars. You may as well call your men off and give up peacefully. They're asking for it.
I'll call you men off. Come on, Toby. We've still got some more work to do. I want to thank you for clearing this case up. The government just renewed my contract for another three years. It all comes on the heading of another job to do. Oh, I know you represent the Cattlemen's Association, but uh, you seem to take such a personal interest in this case. Well, now that I'm back as foreman of the ranch, how do I stand with you, Terry? Well, Bert, I'll always be very fond of you. And as far as Waco's concerned, I think he's mighty nice, too. But I just can't seem to make up my mind. <laughs> I can't blame you, ma'am. I guess there's just one too many of them. No, you, Waco, and Sophie have made yourselves pretty valuable around here. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. That's right. We do need a good cattleman. Would you consider going to work for us? Sure, I'll consider. But mind you, it's just because I love ranching. Mm-hmm.